Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach, the beautiful island of Oahu. I'm looking out the boat, out at the, the big boat right now, coming around the point at Diamond Head. And just so glad to be here and be able to share with you. We're right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church here in Waikiki. So if you ever come into Hawaii, we'd really love it if you're coming to our island to go to the schoolofmanliness.com website, schoolofmanliness.com, and uh, hit the contact form there and send us an email. Let's have coffee. We'd love to see you guys. Maybe go surf. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We call it the Bear Wozniak Adventure because we believe everyone is called by God to have an adventure. And, uh, you know, uh, my my one of my favorite authors is Louis L'Amour. He was the great Western novelist. And he said uh, that adventure is just when uh, a romantic way of saying something went wrong. And so I want to remind you guys, our new my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone?, has been up to number five in Christ books for a Christian men. So, Mama Bears, this is a chance for you to get this book into your men's hands and say, look, you don't have to read the whole book, just read the first chapter. But once you read the first chapter, they'll they'll read they'll read the whole book. So um one of the rules, one of the rules that we have for manliness is to not be just passing through, but to have a have a dream, have a have a vision, have a plan. Because God made each one of us in a very unique way. It's like we each have our own thumbprints. We're made in God's image and likeness, but we have our own telos. We have our own unique purpose and calling. And so uh, seek the Lord and uh, and begin to move. God has an adventure for you that you don't need to, um, you don't need to uh, feel, um, don't be sitting on a couch and living in mediocrity, uh, but seek seek God's will and move out. Do you look at what your gifts are and use them. And don't be afraid of your limitations. Your limitations are there to develop virtue in you so that when you do use your strength, they're yielded to the Lord. So we have a really cool guest with us today. His name is James, which in Hawaiian, of course, is Kimo, who we met and and uh, who really has a servant's heart. We were speaking at the Tampa Men's Conference, and we were really kind of getting inundated with people right, trying to, to buy the book. And James saw that we were in need, and he came up and he said, Let's do this. He got on the computer. Let's do this. Let's do this. And they helped us process cards and just he he stayed with us the whole conference. So um James uh James W A, he goes by as the author of a, he's a poet. But isn't that cool? We have a poet on our show today. But his name is James W. A. Alvarez, the author of a book called Desolation and Epiphany. <laughs> Welcome to the show, James. Good good to have you here. Hey, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Yeah, that was that was quite an event, huh? We were like inundated there. The books we we sold out of the books. We were just inundated at that event. That was cool, and yeah, I that was good. that was an unexpected venture for me. Just you know, walking by, see that you were selling books. I had the same device, and yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah, well, you were you were like the knight in shining armor because you rescued my bride. She was just getting swamped. So you stepped <laughs> stepped in, and then and then just really helped us. So we pre that that really showed who you were to us. And then when we came back, we said, we need to look. He's a poet. Let's find that book. So I ordered your book. And uh, and uh, and now here you are. By the way, I, I happened to glance out the window. Two puffs from whales uh, spouts out there. Yeah, you know, oh, the, wow. the young, the little ones. There's a couple little ones there just out Dang. there on the horizon. It's so cool. So cool to look at. That's out awesome. That. Well, it's poetry in motion. No, we have it. Is. We have it. Well, I, I love the, the title of your book. It's Desolation and the... Uh, and epiphany. It may be desolation to epiphany. I don't know. Um, no, it's good. Yeah, the whole story. Like that. <laughs> but it is, but it is. It's 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 that um the poems, which are really I think a lot of poetry is the venue of the young man or the younger mm -hmm. person. It's a way to really go into a into a deeper place in yourself and really explore yourself. Um what 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 uh when did you realize that you want that you that you love poetry or when you wanted to write poetry? 
yeah, so I've been I've been writing poetry, man, a really long time. I think since 2008, 2009, early high school, maybe middle school. Um, I, I was one of those kids that was uh, I had a lot going on in my head <laughs> and uh, I needed kind of an outlet for that. And I found that I really enjoyed writing. I really enjoyed I was maybe not the best at it, but I put a lot of practice into it. Um, I was never really too good at sports or uh, anything like that. But with with writing, I felt like I really it was both a good outlet. It was a use of my talents. Um, it was a way to sort of process a lot of things externally, mm-hmm. but then also create art. Um, it was a sort of sort of that like artistic kind of personality as well. I've dabbled mm-hmm. in other types of writing. I've dabbled in trying to write short stories or novels. I feel like for me, at least prose is really good, but I have such a hard time focusing on something for so long. Well, um, it is, when it, it, comes is to, it is work. It is work. Yeah. It's a ton of work. And, uh, and, and, and poetry is work too. It's just a different type of, um, I feel like with the, with the longer forms, you have to really worry about getting, getting your, st- telling your story in a concise way. You got to make sure there's no plot holes. You got to make sure your characters go from point A to point B. There's a progression there for poetry. It's more of a snapshot in time. And I think that's what I like about it. It's it's sort of a you take an emotion or you take a story, you take a thing and you kind of condense it into either a small space or not a small space in some cases. But it is, I think, a more concise way of telling that without having to worry about where are these characters going, um, plot holes, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I like yeah. need to figure that out. Yeah. No, po- no, poetically, sorry. too. It's no, no, but poetically. You can say it's a short, very short thing and, and say a lot. That's why so mm-hmm. much of the Bible is poetry. Yes, in a lot of in a, in a lot of the Bible is allegory because or similitude where we'll say, well, this is like that. How do you describe God? Well, let's describe God? him as a let's describe him as a mother hen. You know. Oh, that's of course, like, yeah, yeah, metaphor you know, that, and imagery. Yeah. I think we as people relate to imagery a lot more than we do maybe direct descriptions because it's it adds to a beauty to it. It adds. Well, how many uh, people think of Thomas? How many people pick up Thomas Aquinas versus reading the the, the stories that Jesus told in the Gospels? Oh, sure. Although even Thomas Aquinas himself did write poetry on occasion. <laughs> no, he did write poetry. You're right about um, he that. He did, actually. Oh, yeah. But I mean, uh, I know. C.S. Not, ne- not nearly as much as the Zuma. But. Well, but, you, you know, and, and but you can say so much. And so you can say so much in, in so few words when you when you write. Poetry. When I was a younger man, I was a, I was a musician. So I wrote a lot of lyrics hmm. and I wrote oh, and okay. I wrote. And, yeah. And I wrote some and we had, actually had a. Christian album came out. I got contacted a little while ago by, by a company, by an individual that was doing an anthology of the original Christian music of the the, the 60s and 70s Christian rock. Oh, and yeah. uh, so it's kind of cool. But uh, but I found that it really, it was really uh, a searching mm-hmm. within me. And then when finding it, you want to tell everybody. But um, oh, yeah. poetry, poetry is kind of like a lost art now. We don't hear it that much. I would, you're the first poet I've come along on my radio show, actually. <laughs> yeah, so. it is. It is kind of a, a lost art. I guess it's more of a niche art. I think. I think the people who really like poetry really like poetry. But as far mm-hmm. as like mainstream uh, usage goes, the best poets are songwriters, as you said, actually. <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah. And actually, I dabbled in that as well. I try to get into um, uh, some of the poems in the book. Actually, start off the song lyrics that uh, yeah i never quite learned how to write music i i dabbled in it i tried i actually do play bass um but, you do well you that know. takes talent well wait a minute i, I don't yeah. i doubt not you know, well but... you know you know you don't play bass you weren't wearing dark sunglasses and and black shirt and black pants when you came in You're that's right really and also yeah player. and also i tried to learn how to i just also tried to learn how to write music which you know bass bass players don't so no i <laughs> i, 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 to the music I was i was a guitarist i wrote i strummed the guitar and wrote and wrote the music you know but uh yeah but uh we want when we get back we're gonna talk with you a little bit more about your your own journey in the lord as we go as we talk story about your book Des- desolation and, Ep- and epiphany um but the lord is the author and finisher of our faith you know and so he he's mm-hmm. the finisher of our faith too he's the author you know it's what's interesting about jesus before he was called jesus before he was called christ he was called the word. He was John. Mm-hmm. Referred him. And so the word, word is the word is so powerful. And I've been thinking about this lately, how the words we say to ourselves have are so full of meaning. So be careful what we, you know, be careful what words you say and, and what you in the self, the self thinking that you do. We're talking with James 
W A. He goes by you. His name is his last name is Alvarez. His book Desolation and Epiphany. You can you can get this on Amazon or other places. Where else can they find it? Yeah, it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. But you can check out everything out on my website. The James. Yeah, and w. what is your web? What okay? Wait, what is your website? Oh, the James W A. The so James W A. See that? my name with a the in front. Uh, dot com. What's cool? Yeah, but no, no last name. When you when you when you send me your emails, your email address doesn't have your last name. You don't sign your last name. I'm like, who? What's this guy's last name? I had to finally just. What's your last name? I give up. Even in the that's even true. when you look up your book at Amazon, it doesn't give your last name. So, that's so true. but that's very yeah. poetic. That's very poetic of you. Um, this is yeah. the Bear Watching of Adventure. We're talking to James W. A. in his in his new book of poetry, Desolation and Epiphany. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to invite you to go to our School of Manliness site, uh, schoolofmanliness.com, and become a member of the Man Cave and uh, become a member of the School of Manliness. We have once a month Zoom meetups. We have a non-Facebook community where we talk story about real stuff with each other. And then there's a, a monthly curriculum, about three years worth of a monthly curriculum that we go through together on manliness with audio and video and written content and men this is something that you can lead your sons through. It helps you go into a deeper conversation with your sons. You know how when you say to your son, what did you do today? And he says, oh, nothing. You know, this allows you, this This is a, a great way to get into deeper conversation. As is the book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It also is a big a big part of the curriculum is based on this book too. So uh, we have a, with, with us as a guest, a, a real thing. Uh, James W.A. is a poet. His new, His book, desolation and epiphany we got to know him when we were at doing a man a men's event and we were overwhelmed with people wanting to buy the book and james just stepped up and for, spent the whole day with us so we thank you james tell us can you tell us uh can you tell us your story i wonder if you could you could tell us your story or you could tell us your story and interweave it with some of your poetry but we we love to hear uh people's journey of faith yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, so my 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 uh, sort of faith story is probably a very common one. It's probably at least at the start, at least on the surface. I was born Catholic, raised Catholic, the cradle Catholic, one might say. Um, grew up in the faith. You know, went to mass every Sunday. I was pretty much involved in. I couldn't tell you how many ministries at my home church. 
um, altar server, extraordinary minister. I was a sacristan for a little bit. Wow. That's pressure. Um, That's pressure. It was, it was a lot. Yeah. The it number is. of service hours I had in high school was uh, tremendous. Mm. Um, youth, youth ministry. My, my mother was a youth minister at the, at our, at our parish for a little while. Um, so very, very involved, very, um, active in the church. Um, I think internally though, uh, there was definitely to, to say it was an emptiness might've been an understatement. I, I did a lot of the things I, I did the acts of service, went through the motions. Um, but I think my heart was, was, I wouldn't say it was really with the Lord. <laughs> I would say it was, um, I don't need, I, you think I'd have a good metaphor for it. It felt like being a machine. Honestly, I, I did a lot you of were the going, things. You were going through the, through the motions. Went through the motions um, and never really felt it. And I think, I don't, I don't blame anyone specifically for that. I just think a lot of catechesis, at least in my experience, and I'm, you know, perhaps part of a, a younger generation, I suppose, a lot of our catechesis is built on what to do. You know, the mm. prayer, memori memorizing prayers, the what, you know, the things you do at mass. Um, and those things are all very important. Uh, I think there's a bit of a lacking of matters of the heart. I think something that I never really, I don't think I ever re realized it. If it was taught to me, I, I completely missed it. Um, mm. Was really that, you know, our faith is about having a relationship with Jesus mm. Christ, having a relationship with God um, and that sort of encounter. And that was something that I... I didn't really realize for a very well, did long you, time. Did you think that was possible or did it never even cross your mind? I think maybe originally I thought it was possible. I think as I got a little bit older, um, as it turned out, okay, now we'll get to that part of the story. But I think for a little while, I sort of gained a very warped perception of what God was. I think you could have, I thought, at some point I thought maybe you could have a relationship with him, but the God that you would have that, the relationship you would have, was not a very good one to me. God was something of a something of a taskmaster, something of a um, a conditional type of love. You did these things in my it, from my perception at the time. God demanded certain things of you. You did those things. You played by the rules. You did everything right. You got a good you got a good spot in heaven. A good retirement plan, as it were. Maybe mm. um, it's very cold. So it, so it's very it wasn't relationship oriented. You know, Jesus. You know, gives us his commandments, but he says, "If you love me, you will do what I command you." Because it's a bit, it's a relationship mm -hmm. first, and then you are the overflow of that relationship is to be obedient, and then the overflow of that is, of course, communion with him. But I, I know too, when I was young, I was I loved Catholic faith, but I, I and I knew the saints that had this sort of certain something special with the Lord, but I never really thought of having a personal relationship with the Lord. Mm. Um, it was actually some of my my Protestant friends that began to first, you know, share that with me, and then yeah, and then, a... then in, yeah, and go ahead. But in, I would say oh. in time, in time, I did have a beautiful conversion experience in the Catholic Church, but I didn't even know that was available. I don't know, if, but it is, if it's not about the heart, sure. what is? It? Well, sure, sure, absolutely, and that, and, and I guess you could say in, in a way that was sort of my. It's funny you mentioned having Protestant influences. I, I think in college I realized. Um, I started to get this idea that maybe some people could have a relationship with God, but mm -hmm. he picks his favorites, right? You That's know. how I felt. That's exactly. Well, yeah. I wonder how they got from there, from here to there, to have that kind of sure. personal experience. One, one of my favorite saints, is, even now, I actually have her crest tattooed on my arm, is St. Joan of Arc. Um, and to me, it was always, well, what makes someone like her different from someone like me? Why did she get visions and got to do all these incredible mm -hmm. things? Yeah, and and not me. What makes me different? And I think in a lot of it, a lot of that I internalized. I figured, well, if God is perfect and God's love, then it's got to be me. Something's just so totally wrong. And of course, I've got a lot of other issues as well. I'm not. But you know, perfect, but, but you know, but God is. But but God is perfect at that. He's the perfect. He plays hard to get. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like oh, it's sure. like I um God. I think it was it was a Pascal. I forget who said it. God hides himself just enough so the one who doesn't want to find him won't, but the oh, one sure. who does, but the one who does will, and there is that sort of that um, that um, the Lord just being um, like like the beautiful in Song of Sol Solomon. One of my, I love Song of Solomon. I've done mm. a lot of study in that area. Exactly. Beautiful poem, and where he where she says, "My I I I um I I couldn't sleep on my bed at night. I was tossing and turning." 
uh, where is he whom my heart loves? And then there was a knock on the door. You know, at one point, mm-hmm. he, he touches the door and he says, open the door to me and pure myrrh flows off his hands onto the lattice of the door. Um, there, there, is that, there is that time of where is he? And then there is oh, that yeah, time. Very much and then so. there is, and then there is that time when he, when he comes to you, when he, when you know. But there has to be that longing, so that you know it's oh, real sure. when you find him. And I, and I think there always was a longing in my heart. Um, and I think I maybe try to fill that in in not so healthy ways. Um, went through a period of my life where I, I drank very, very heavily, and I think that was an attempt to fill that void. I think, in, and it's really evident in the first part of my book, in that desolation half, as the name mm. heavily implies, I think I had always searched for God, maybe. And the book is quite Desolation it. and Epiphany, a po- book of poetry by James W. Wade. Sorry. Yeah. I, um, go, yeah, I think I in that. In, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I stepped into other shows there. I think that I think there was always a searching. There was always a long, and it was trying to figure that out. It was sort of like, um, if God's not in the room, I got to figure out what is he like? How is he? If I can't have a relationship with him, I got to figure, figure that out myself. And, and I figured that out in, in not so good ways for a very long time. It's funny. I actually had a lot of Protestant friends in college. I was really involved in an in outreach ministry in mm-hmm. college. Um, and those guys were some, some really, really great people. Um, that was the mm-hmm. first time I ever saw joy in ministry, joy in doing God's work. It's funny because growing up in, in high school and all the things I did at that church, no one was really happy. No one was really, no one had that fervor. And that maybe that's just my experience. Maybe I never no, saw I, I, it. Maybe I was well, blind it, to it. it. Can be, that can be in but, any in any church. Um, of course. When, it, when yeah. you make your when you make your faith into a re- religiosity, which is different than religion, you know, some people mm-hmm. are more, more uh, when John Paul II was the Pope, I heard someone say, um, some people are more religious than the Pope. You know, oh, you, sure. you, because God didn't say, here's the rules, follow these rules and, and you follow these methods and you'll get to heaven. All of those mm-hmm. are there to help to win your heart. But yes. um, when he said, Abraham, uh, get everything you got, go to the land, I'm going to show you. He never gave Abraham a map. Every day, oh, right. Right. every day, Abraham had to get up and God would tell him where to go. And he followed, and he followed the Lord faithfully. Uh, the children of Israel in the desert, they followed the cloud. It, it was when the, when mm-hmm. the cloud lifted off the temple, the tabernacle in the wilderness, they would follow that cloud. God wants to have a personal relationship with us, and mm-hmm. He doesn't. And so, it's so good that we have the sacraments, and we and we know, and we have all these the religion that we do have. But if that's all you have, if that religion doesn't bring you into a deep personal relationship with Jesus, you're missing out. We're talking with. I mean, that's what it's all about. I'll take the heart of stone from of your course. body and give you a heart of flesh. The Bible doesn't say um, uh, that he came into the into the world to uh, looking for droids, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> he, very he much so. Looking for, for human. He loves the human heart and the human heart that that wanders off sometimes and the human heart that searches and stumbles and eventually comes back to him. And that's a part of faith that I think people don't talk about much. We mm-hmm. talk about having faith in God, but you know, God has to have a certain faith in us to let us wander if we w- we're going to wander, but just have always be nurturing us and working in our lives to bring us back to Him. You know, there's a certain certain degree to which yeah, God has so. a faith has a faith in us too. Talking with James W. A. Uh, his book, his po- a poetry, Desolation and Epiphany. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. More about James' story. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? 
I love these words that Louis L'Amour wrote in his book Bendingo Shafter. He's the great Western novelist. I watched those in the room with me and was lonely within myself. For there was in me a great reaching outwards, a desire to be and to become. It's time to lay your cards on the table. Push all your chips in the middle of the table and say, I'm all in to God. Show me your plan, God, because if you say yes to the plan that God has for you, and he does have plans, he says, I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, not destruction, a future reserved for you, full of hope. If you say yes to God's plan, demons will tremble when you say his name, and mountains will move when you say his name. It will cost you everything, don't get me wrong, but it will open vistas of hope and joy for you and for those that your life impacts that you cannot even imagine. Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're so excited to announce to you uh, a new television series, uh, Spirited Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. When we did our last season of Long Ride Home here in Hawaii, people said they got to see more of my wife, Cindy, and they go, we want to see more of Cindy, especially the mama bears out there want to see more of Cindy. And so, you know, we live in Hawaii. We have a great life. You know, we met tandem surfing. That's where you lift a woman when you surf. And we snorkel, we uh, we hike, we just, I don't know, there's always, always kind of beautiful things here. So why not share that with you and in the process share Catholic teaching with you and share uh, the joy of the Lord with you. And also when we go sailing on our boat, the Spirit of Adventure in the Caribbean, where, which by the way, if you go to our website, and contact us, we can tell you about the next retreat we're going to have on the boat. Um, why not share that with you too? So go to, go to the website, spiritofadventuretv.com and you can follow us. Uh, and we'll, you'll find out more about us there, or you can go to School of Manliness, and you can find it out, find out there, too. Uh, we're talking with James W.A., author, poet, Desolation and Epiphany. What an honor to be a poet, to be called by God to be a poet. So tell us more now. So you, you, were, you, were, you were holding to the form of religion, but, kind of, but denying its power, as the Bible says, right? You were, you, I would you say so. Form, I would say, yeah. But the form will get you there, eventually, in that sure. best Platoistic sense. Tell us... Uh, Tell you know, but but sooner or later, it's like Plato's cave, right? Yeah, I I think going through those motions, doing all of those things, and learning that, I think is definitely important. I think it in yeah. partly established that grace, kind of maybe very deep down. Yeah, and, and that sacramental. Later. It's really true. There really is grace there, but yeah, that very structure so. that structure is there for a reason to bring you to Christ. And of course, of course. But eventually, I did have yeah. to learn the the other side of that, and I I, so I would like happened? to say. Well, I, I would like to say that I, you know, really strived for it and just found it on my own. Um, but really, I kind of reached a point in my life where it's a very low point. I was more on the on the cusp of giving up. Um, hmm. And it was it was in that moment. It was actually on the the feast of Epiphany, um, which is really it, which is why the name of the book uh, has Epiphany in the title. It's a, it's Desola sort of a play on desolation words. and Epiphany, yeah, because it is also Epiphanies that I had as well as the feast of wow. Epiphany. It's sort of a wow. sort of a meta joke, I guess. What happened? Um, it, it was there. I had a moment. I had an encounter with. Uh, I would say it was an encounter with God. I mean, it was wasn't. You know, I would like to say I was sitting in the adoration chapel and a beam of light came down, but that's not quite how it happened. That's not, not how you got how that. Happened. That's not how you got that halo that's around your head. No, I would like to say that, but I added that <laughs> later. Actually, I just uh, got some duct tape and just put it uh, on there. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I. But I, I had a moment where um, I felt I felt the presence of God really impact me it was really I, I don't quite know how to describe it i've tried to describe it in, in my book a little bit but it really there was a moment it's almost like a switch went off in my head and i felt like all of the 
all of the negativity, all of the, um, I, in the book, I describe it as the war I waged on myself. All of that um, animosity, all of that hatred, all of that uh, loneliness really kind of came into, I don't want to say came into alignment. That's sort of a, a, an odd phrase, but it, it made sense to me. Um, what do you mean by the wage you wore? Uh, I the the war you waged on yourself. I think that's very true statement. What does that sure, mean? Sure, sure. So I, I, I I get to a point in my life where I I would honestly say I very much hated myself um, because I viewed myself as unworthy. I viewed myself as well. If God doesn't like me, if God doesn't see me worthy of communicating with me and having a relationship with me, then I must be worthless. And if I'm worthless, if I can't do anything right, then um, I hated myself and I tortured myself in a lot of ways. <laughs> Um, part of that, part of that drinking, um, was a way to maybe punish myself. It was sabotage. I've always had a bit of a, a scrupulosity. I think is something I've struggled with a lot. It's probably something. What is what does that common. word mean? What does that word mean? Scrupulosity, I think, is the over the extreme of being being way too hard on yourself when it comes to matters of matters of faith and matters of having a relationship with God. Mm. It's good to be humble in the sense of acknowledging our flaws. If you go too much, I believe the term would be called scrupulosity. It's it's the person that feels like they have to go to confession every day or every time they do something have, have you ever read so CS? minor. You ever read screw tape letters? I have. Yes. Yeah. I and have. you know the, how the junior demon, he's saying, okay, dude, you, you blew it, man. This guy, they're not the senior demon speaking to the junior demon. You blew it. He's become a Christian. You know, you you did all you could to keep him away from becoming a Christian. But now he's a Christian. Push him, push him, push him the, the other way. way. Yep. Have him become too scrupulous. Have him become too religious as opposed to, you know, using religion as a, being involved. Of in it's more, it's more letter Christ. of the law. And ultimately, it's a denial go. of God's mercy. It's a denial of God's mercy. Because I think if Amen. we believe that God is all forgiving and all merciful, which, of course, we do, <laughs> um, then to think that, oh, if I did this minor thing, now God hates me. It's absurd in, in hindsight, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But it's and a denial of that mercy. Yeah, it's going too far. And, and it's going even too far. You know, you know, there's a even the Catholic Church differentiates between a venial sin and a mortal sin. You know, of course. Yeah, um, and of course. so and it's so important it, to be sorry. It's important to seek for God's forgiveness. Obviously, if we don't ask right, for forgiveness, we won't get right. it. But but there's but a way to in which torture you yourself with it is is unhealthy. It's unhelpful. That's what I'm saying. You said you were warring on yourself. Yes. It's I mean, it's a degree. Uh, you no, know, I think like, like I, a lot of poetry, it's it, it's somewhat of a metaphor. But, you but know. I think it's absolutely the, the truth. I see that. And I think in all of our lives, to some degree or other, we beat ourselves up. And what we really need to do is just go go to the Lord. No, so then what happened on that day of Epiphany? I there was a, I had a moment um, and I was I was with a friend of mine um, and we were just we were just hanging out. <laughs> um, but I was with a friend and, and I felt this and I don't, I don't think she felt that I wasn't like a cloud came over us or anything like that. It's not like we're having a terribly deep conversation. No, um, no, but no, in, no, no, let, let's 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 stage this. Sure. God comes when he chooses to come to you. Very much so. And this is the moment that God decided, I have an appointment with you. And this is a moment when God, there yeah. might have been someone else in the room who knows what the circumstances are, but out of like a lightning bolt, God shows up. And, and I think it was because of that, honestly, that in the in a moment I completely didn't expect, and it's a surprisingly ah, sober night, I should clarify yeah. that, <laughs> um, yeah. was not drinking that night to clarify. Um, but uh, in a moment I didn't expect, I think that's what made it so impactful to me, that of all of, out of all of my searching, God chose a random moment in time to, to reach down to me and really show me who he was, really show and me. What happened? Heart. What happened? I was... Um, I didn't really know how to react at first. I I, I, had, I had to leave. I had to kind of. Was it a feeling? Was an opening of your mind and your heart? What was it? Sort of like um, I, I think I described. I I don't have the exact quote, but I think there's a line in the book where I describe it as like a wave of elation. Amen. Um, I felt that wave. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a a peace, but also a, a joy, a fire, a joy. I think I may use the fire metaphor at some point in the book. I had to have. Um, you stole you stole a, you stole that metaphor from God. Hey, so oh, of course I did. Else, <laughs> yeah, almost or, or else God plagiarized you. I don't know. I'm not saying, but no. So so, so no, but 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 when that wave came, what remained uh, of it a day later? 
A day later, I really had to process what that meant then for me in my next step. What did I need to do? Um, mm, that's a man's. That's a man's way of thinking. I mean, that's sort of my mentality, anyways. You mm. probably know it. We're, we're fixers, we're doers. We like to do mm -hmm. things. And so, is is it tangibly? Well, where do we go from here? If I've, it's one thing to say, uh, you know, I'm okay now, quote unquote, maybe, but that's not enough. It's it's how do we reinforce that? What do we do with that? First thing I did was immediately, and and this sounds maybe somewhat hyperbolic, but it was true. I took every beer I had in the fridge and just poured it down the drain. I just had to get rid of it, and I and I can drink comfortably now. I'm not trying to make this sound like a uh, you know, but it become kind of sort of your scenario. For you. it was a, yeah, okay. It was a rejection of. Uh, making that conscious choice to change. I think God sometimes gifts us grace. He gives us that invitation, Absolutely. that moment really. But if we don't capitalize on it, if we don't accept that and kind of wow. uh, roll with it, <laughs> you know, it could just yeah. fizzle. Um, I don't know if it was the next day, but it was certainly within within a day or two that I went right to, I went to adoration after that. We have a um, a daily adoration chapel, not quite perpetual chapel at our, in my home parish in Tampa. Um but I went there and I, and I prayed not quite like I had ever before, really, in a, really? In a more uh, conversational tone, um, in a conversational, in a gratitude tone. I think that was a big thing oh. I missed in my life was gratitude um, wow. for those, for that, for that moment, for that healing, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then in over the, the, moment, over the those... moment, we'll take a break here in a moment and we'll come back sure. to this, but in a moment when he touched the lattice of the window and said, open. And you opened and the Lord, it wasn't like he invaded you because my, my mom used to say, God's a gentleman. You of know, course. You have to, yeah. He has to be invited. So you had this search and you had this invitation and it was kind of an open invitation to him, but you'd become um, uh, saddened and disheartened. And then he, sh and then he says, Hey, you got a minute. And he just, and he walks in. Very much so. And in, in a profound way. And I think that was, that's what exactly what I needed. <laughs> yeah. We're talking with James W.A. If you want to know his last name, I'll tell you. It's kind of a secret. I don't know why. He, uh, when, you go on, when you go on YouTube to buy his book, Desolation and Epiphany, you'll only see his name, James W.A. But don't you think that's the way a poet should have his name? It's pretty cool. His last name is actually Alvarez. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Here is a YouTube video short which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Bridle your passions. Think of your passions, your appetites, and your desires as a powerful horse, which you as a rider must guide, rein in, and then at the right time and place, release in its full power. Just like a mighty racehorse, our passions run best and fulfill their purpose, and so fulfill us best when they are bridled, reined in, and released, guided, and directed by a man whose soul's primary desire is to delight in the will, in the order, and in the presence of God himself. In that way, we find the fulfillment of all desire. In that way, our passions reach their ultimate good. And in that way, good things run wild. My newest book, 
12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're uh, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We want to invite you to uh, to become a uh, to go to our our YouTube site. It's the Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube site. We have all the Long Ride Home TV series. We're just releasing them now so you can watch them on YouTube. It's it's on Prime Video, and of course, it's with EWTN, but now you can go to YouTube and view them. Um, and and that's Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure TV. We also have uh, all of these all these uh, TV shows, all of our radio shows, I mean, are, are there. And then my sons have done this great work. They have over 100 of these 60-second YouTube shorts, which you can take, you can share. They're based on excerpts from my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, or, or little... 60 second clips from our TV show, long ride home and other books. So go to the website, check on the, on the shorts, they call them shorts and begin to share those out. You'll have a real impact on people's lives. If you do, our guest today is J James W a, he's a poet talking about that moment of epiphany when he, when he, when the Lord uh, was surprised by joy and, uh, and then, and then came, then, then uh, uh, tell us then what happened. So you begin to go to Eucharistic adoration. Yeah, and I had been to adoration before. It wasn't this wasn't like a you know um, a Samuel kind of moment of like go here sort of thing. <laughs> I'd been to adoration before, but I hadn't really um, hadn't really experienced it. I think in the way that I have after that moment. My, my first experience was in high school. I was at a peer ministry camp, and so many people around me were crying, and so many people were really um, really emotional about it. And I was I had no idea what was going on. I was stone faced. Mm. I just I mm. simply didn't get it. I know um, when my mom when my mom was really seeking the Lord and she would pray and her friends were having these beautiful conversion experiences in the uh, Catholic charismatic renewal. Oh, yes. And yeah. she was prayed with to receive this and nothing happened. And yeah, like, that was my first, first experience. I, I'm the first person that Jesus rejected. But then all of a sudden, I don't know where it was, but a few days later, all of a sudden, there was just this waterfall. So God, it, it lets you know God is God and you're not. And he, of course. He and and, and God does things in his own time, not necessarily ours. He's smarter you know, than um, us. He's smarter than us. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> you know, I don't even claim to know the reasons of, oh, I went through this journey because of all of this. I don't really make that claim. And if I do, I, it's certainly not meant because I have no idea why my journey had to happen this way. Um, uh, but nonetheless, I, I think... Um, in that, in those after the fact, and I went, not a week went by, I actually, I think one week went by during the Holy week was a little bit tough because of uh, with the, with the, you know, good Friday and all that of, of, with that, with going to adoration really kind of strengthen that um, much, much later, much, much later, I, I picked up, I prayed the rosary more than I ever had. I used to not like the rosary at all. Admittedly, <laughs> I'm not saying that's right. Well, you talked um, about, you talked about when you were earlier, you said you felt kind of robotic at, and I remind, I remember when I was involved in Catholic Charismatic Renewal, our little prayer group was called the New Heart Community. Based mm. on that saying, I will take the heart of stone from your body mm -hmm. and give you a heart of flesh. I'll fill you heart with new and right desires. I will fill you with new and right desires. And all of a sudden, the thought of drinking excess to excess was repulsive to you. You got rid repulsive of the beer. Drink. And and then there was this desire to go to Eucharistic adoration. That mm -hmm. isn't you. That isn't true grit. That's that's uh, grit and grace. You know, it's it's sure. a Lord... In, in Lord's invitation, it's it's Tell answering us. a call, I think. And even then, I, I from then, and I still try to do this. I'm not perfect about it, of course. But really, when I'm planning my next thing to do, either it's like you know, not big things, but even little things, 
you know, the phrase I would use then and the phrase I use sometimes now is I think God leads us one stage to the next. You know, I, I didn't I don't know my whole big, you know, five year plan of what's in store for my life. I have no idea. I don't know what I'm going to do later tonight, but I know that God will lead me from one step to the next step. And sometimes just knowing one more step is all I need to know. And that's OK. I think I had to accept that. too. Well, you know, like going back to Abraham, he didn't give him a map. And the Bible right. says, I, he didn't say, I'm going to give you a set of high beam headlights. He said, I'm a, I'm a lamp unto your feet, implying that your feet are moving, but he's just telling you the next yeah. step. Now you, you have, you know, where you're, you know, I'm going to go from here. I have it. I'm going to go to, I'm going to start a CPA firm or I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to do this or do that. It's, you have these long, these longer term visions, but you each day, each step you give to the Lord. And sometimes you don't, you just know that oh, this course. is what I'm going to do. I know, not perfect. I, yeah. I remember once being in Florida. And people ask me, well, what are you doing here? How, how long are you going to be here? And I go, I, I don't know. I just yeah, knew that the yeah. Lord wanted me to go there. And then the TV show and the radio show all developed. Yeah. And then I and I kept my home here. But then I gradually came back. But people said, well, how long are you going to be here? And I would just say, I just know the Lord wants me here right now. I don't know what the Lord's doing. Oh, of There's a really big and that's something I learned as know. well. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I think I think some some part of me also really I really needed to know the plans. I was a very anxious child, even an anxious adult, really, <laughs> and in terms of planning things out. In terms of like, all right, if I'm going here, I got, if I'm going on a trip, man, I got to know the itinerary. And and I think I've relaxed a lot a bit on that because it's part of its faith and part of it's just you know as my anxiety has eased to know I don't have to know every plan. I don't know what I'm going to do this time <laughs> next year, but that's okay. I'm kind of going to follow where the Lord leads me. I mean, I, this book didn't really come around right after that fact. It came out two, two years later. <laughs> this book came out in October, actually. So um, there, there is, there that is was that a journey, of... too. I didn't even know I was going to really come out with this book when I did. Um, it's beautiful. Thank the you. The Desolation and Epiphany, a book of poetry by James W.A., our, our guest today. How can they find you? Yeah, my, you can go to my website, thejameswa.com. Thejameswa.com. No, I know there's a verse there, and there are some people that don't plan and need to. There were God saying, "Okay, now listen, listen. We've got." And there, there are some people that are overly detailed. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And God says, "Well, right, what about today?" But there is that beautiful verse that says, "I won't call you servants anymore, because a servant doesn't know what the master is about or what the master is doing. I will call you friends." And that that's that's the ultimate. What you've been saying from the beginning is. God, God may have plans. I may know part of them, you know, but the bottom line mm -hmm. is friendship with God. Of course. And trust you, too. I, I think what really, um, what the lesson was taught to me there is to trust. I didn't trust God before I figured, oh, well, he didn't have a plan for me. So he was just going to let me stumble about, but now he has a plan for me. And knowing that and acknowledging that has let, let me follow that. <laughs> what does it mean that to know sense? like that? Isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? But there's something you said, the word to know. Like there's, you have a knower down inside you and the knower knows there's not a, sure. there's a resolute knowing that God is for you and God has a plan for you and God is in relationship with you. Very much so. And I, and I, and I think knowing that is, is a, is a, a blessing. It's a grace. It's a gift given to us. I don't know if we, I don't know. I'm not sure if we know that inherently anyways. I think some people, maybe some people do, <laughs> at least for me, I didn't know that. I had yeah, to but be, when I you had know, but, but, but when well, you did, know, I, but when you know, I can't be moved. People can try to talk me out of what mm -hmm. I, who I know. I, yep. I, I, yeah, I, I can't have to be faithful to him. Who am I have known? Now you're a younger man. What would you say to the younger men and women out there? You've got about two minutes left. Sure. I, I think for the younger, as a, as a Catholic, I, I think the important thing I, the, the, the advice I would give is to really seek a relationship with God, to really seek to know God. It's one thing to know what you need to do. That's important. It's another to know him, to talk to him like you would a deep friend, a true friend. Um, if maybe people who don't have, no, don't know that level of friendship, maybe who, those people who talk about God as father, maybe some people don't know their uh, their parents that will have that good of a relationship. But God is God, and that's totally different than any other relationship uh, possible. So to seek that is something totally different than what, anything else thing, we can know. It's one thing to know about God, but to know God is different. And I used to think God was like a father who sent child support checks, but didn't love me enough to yeah. hold me, to hold me, you know, that, that there's, yeah. there's yeah. a design. I think it's a very good thing. analogy. Yeah. But, but, um, but uh, God, um, God is always on the move towards you. Always wanting good for you. Always loving you. He's looking past your faults. He's ready to forgive you. He sees your need. He's ready to fill, fulfill those needs. 
But what you're pursuing right now is is vain pursuit. It's you're pursuing emptiness. It's like one of the early church, church fathers said. It's like seeing a man reach out and grab air and and eat it like he thinks it's food. It's just emptiness <laughs> filling you with more emptiness. But he, Jesus is the real food. And when you if you seek him, I would say if you don't know how to pray, open up the book of Psalms and pray one psalm a day. It's a practice of the church and the liturgy of the hour, but open up the book of Psalms. It'll teach you how to pray. Open mm -hmm. up uh, open yeah. up the gospel. It'll teach you the stories of Jesus. Were you reading it yourself and meditating on it? And you'll begin to hear the stories and you'll begin to have a conversation. Very much so. And Psalms are poetry as well. So there you go. It all comes full circle. <laughs> you think you'll ever get a chance to hang out with King David and talk story about poetry oh i hope so that's one that's one ancient poet whose brain i love to pick really is that right i mean i i think david's a really interesting character because he is he is both a poet uh a priest a king a warrior he's all of the things i mean a when murderer, people think of a murderer uh, uh of course he's done bad things you know, too so he was a very, on the other side of that right yeah he in other words he was very human very human he's very but, human but he but he was but he was um redeemed you know, he, he, of course, yes. He 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 sought God and sought God's will, and then you see this beautiful poetry. You know, as he played the lyre, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, and uh, and so we come back to James W. A. the poet, Desolation and Epiphany. Thank you for writing this book. Where can they find it? Of course, it's on my website, thejameswa.com. Thejameswa.com. Uh, we got to go. Um, we have a tradition here at the Bear Wozniak Adventure to. Say aloha. Ha means breath. Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed his spirit on his disciples. So we say to you, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.